Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are located. Thank you all so much for joining Amtrak Vacations for today's exciting presentation. Folks, any questions that you may have during our presentation here today, please feel free to type those away in your question box located on the right-hand side of your screen, and we will save time at the end of today's presentation to answer any questions that you may have. Today's presentation is scheduled to be about 30 to 45 minutes, give or take, with questions. So I hope you can join us all the way through. Also, please be sure to check that your device speakers are unmuted so you'll be able to hear us. So with that in mind, let's get started. And today, folks, we are talking about overnight rail vacations on board Amtrak. My name is Jim Marini, and we'll probably be your host here today. By the way, our phone number is listed at the bottom of each slide. We are open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, as well as on Saturdays from 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can also visit our website or even better, contact your local travel advisor to book any of these exciting trips that we're gonna talk about. Now, for those of you who may not be as familiar with Amtrak Vacations, we are part of the Yankee Leisure Group family of brands. So if you look all the way to the left-hand side of your screen, we are the official tour operator here in the United States, as well as around the world for Amtrak itself. So Amtrak Vacations, we do everything from rail, plus hotels, meals, sightseeing tours, activities, car rentals, we have packages, all put together from literally two, three, four, five day weekend, week long getaway trips to one and two weeks long across the country, including overnight rail journeys, which is the topic of today, as well as the beautiful national parks. Now, if you look at the brochure right there in the middle of your screen, that is Yankee Holidays. This is all of our independent flexible independent driving vacations road trips so if anybody wants to do any road trips or driving vacations locally here in the united states that's yankee holidays and all the way to the right hand side is our international brand this is rail bookers our sister brand that goes throughout canada throughout europe and around the world including even alaska where you can travel in the great state of alaska by rail. So lots of great options for all of you. But today, it is all about Amtrak vacations and the fantastic overnight rail journeys that you can travel to by train. So if you'll take a look at this map, everyone, you see all those red lines right there in front of you? Those represent all the different Amtrak train routes throughout the United States. And on the red lines, you'll see little white dots. You know what those are, folks? Those are all the different Amtrak train stations that you can start and or end your rail vacation at. In fact, believe it or not, there's over 500 Amtrak train stations throughout the United States. So if any of you joining us here today, if you do not like to fly or don't want to fly, or certainly you're looking for something different, you've got lots of options. And a little fun trivia for all of you. Do you know in the year 2019, which was just recently, over 33 million people traveled on board Amtrak, over 33 million people. So if Amtrak was an airline, it would actually be the sixth largest airline in the United States. Now, I have some fun questions for all of you right here, right now. And if the answers are yes to any of these questions that I'm going to ask all of you right here, right now, considering to travel overnight on board Amtrak vacations is a great option. All right. As I mentioned, if any of you do not like to fly, if you don't feel like driving, if you're looking for something different, do any of you have a special anniversary or birthday coming up or a special occasion coming up where any of you may originally been planning to go on a cruise and no fault whatsoever to those fantastic cruise lines, they haven't been able to operate just yet. Why not rail as a great option? suggestion in place of sale. Were some of you planning or originally thinking about traveling internationally and now want to stay closer to home? Certainly as it's very tricky to travel around the world right now, we are seeing such a huge demand for so many people wanting to see more of our own backyard right here in the United States. And we can certainly help you do that. And here's the best part. Any of you can travel from today. Yes, just like it says right there on your screen, folks. If any of you want to literally get out of your house, I can't tell you how many times we have heard that 
from so many of our travelers who literally, they just want to get out of their house and do something and go somewhere. You can literally travel from today, tomorrow, in the next one to two weeks, one to two months, all the way up to 2023. So you got lots of great flexibility and options. Now, there's so many reasons why travelers love Amtrak vacations. If you look in the top left-hand corner, when you plan and book your trip, whether it's through your local travel advisor or speaking to one of our rail experts, we're going to find the best routes for you and or your travel advisor, the best times ensuring you have lots of great options. As I mentioned, you can book and travel from today all the way to 2023. We do have a maximum flexibility offer going on, which I'm gonna tell you more about in just a little bit. We also have the largest rail vacation selection between both of our brands, Amtrak Vacations, as well as rail bookers, all right? So between the US, Canada, Europe, and beyond. And no rail trip is too complicated for us. Any trip can be customized. Any trip can be customized or personalized just the way you would like it. Let's talk about that for a minute. If you look in the top left-hand corner, folks, you can add on any destination. Maybe some of you have family or friends that live in other parts of the country and you'd like to go visit them and then tie it in and make it a vacation along the way. I've heard examples of folks that were going to weddings or different special events or visiting family or traveling with family, friends, and loved ones to make up for lost time. Also, you can add an extra night. You could take a round trip right from your hometown Amtrak station. So again, you never have to step foot on an airplane. You never have to step foot on a gas pedal. All right. You can upgrade your rail trip ticket. You can add sightseeing tours or upgrade to private tours. So lots of great options when it comes to Amtrak vacations. And one of the last points I'll mention before we move into some of our exciting overnight rail journeys why book now? Well, this is the maximum flexibility offer that I was just mentioning a little earlier, which has now been extended to the end of September of this year. So what this means, folks, any of you that make any new reservation with us or even better through your local travel advisor to travel anytime this year in 2021, to travel anytime in 2022, even into 2023, as long as you book with a small deposit of only $250 on an average per person to travel anytime this year, next year, or even into 2023. If you did need to change or postpone your trip, whatever the reason is, we are waiving any and all change and cancellation fees. Basically, in essence, giving you the freedom to change your dates, the duration, or even the destination of your vacation. Let's talk about some of these exciting overnight rail journeys that you could take advantage of, starting with America coast to coast. Now, any of you that have ever had on your wish list, your bucket list of traveling cross country, as I heard recently doing a similar presentation, one of our great travelers said to me, she said, Jim, there's not a better time to see more of our own backyard than now. And I couldn't agree more. Now, as I mentioned, this particular trip starts in our nation's capital. Washington, D.C., where we offer a double-decker bus tour that can get you in and around the city without having to rent a car or uh, taking a taxi or Uber. We also offer what's called Monuments to Moonlight, and that's kind of similar to this picture right here, where you get to see a lot of the iconic sites within Washington, D.C., whether it's the Capitol building or some of these iconic monuments that are illuminated in the evening. We offer that as a great optional excursion, which I highly recommend as my family and I did that about four years ago. Now, this trip also includes the great city of Chicago. And what an awesome city. So for any of you that have never been to the great city of Chicago, home of the deep dish pizza, home of the Chicago Cubs, even if you're not a baseball fan, getting a chance to see Wrigley Field, home of the Chicago hot dogs. And you know what it's also home to? Chicago's famous Second City Comedy Club. These are some of the great iconic places that you can visit during your free time, during your time at leisure. By the way, Second City Comedy Club, some of the most famous actors of today and some of the most funniest comedians got their start at Second City Comedy Club. This right here is such a great city. We also offer an option to do an architecture cruise, which is what you're looking at right here. Just, just an awesome experience. Now, in all of the cities, you also get to choose between a three, four, or five star hotel, a three, four, or five diamond hotel. 
Here's an example of one called the Drake Hotel. Folks, I just stayed at this hotel about three weeks ago. It is literally a block away from Michigan Avenue, which is where you want to be. Michigan Avenue is lined with all the different shops and restaurants and just great activities for all of you, right in the heart of the city. It's also walking distance to the waterfront area. Um, Navy Pier, which also has some great sites and activities. Just an awesome location. This is a four-star, four-diamond hotel. Now, after you leave Chicago, we head out west into the great city of San Francisco. And as I mentioned, folks, there is not a better time to see more of our own backyard, whether it's as early as this year or in 2022 and even beyond. San Francisco, one of the highest real estate district, districts in the United States, one of the most expensive areas in the United States, but certainly one of the best, right? Great seafood, great Italian food, great Asian style cuisine, home of the Golden Gate Bridge, right? Absolutely amazing. Also home of one of the crookedest streets in the world, Lombard Street. So this package itself, everyone, if you take a look at the map on the right-hand side, you see that red line? That represents the two different trains that you'll travel on, okay? One train traveling overnight from D.C. to Chicago, where then you connect on my personal favorite train, which is called the California Zephyr. And that's the train that will take you from Chicago out to the San Francisco area, which is actually in Emeryville. California. And by the way, if you look at the red triangle, okay, from Chicago to San Francisco, you see the number two. What that lets you know is you are overnighting on board the train for two nights. So for any of you that want to experience what life is like on board the train and consider upgrading to a private sleeper, which we're going to talk about a little bit in a little while towards the end of today's presentation, definitely worth it. Let's move along, okay? The next one is Denver Rocky Mountain Getaway. Now, we have all different types of trips, some that are one and two weeks long, as I mentioned, and then also some that are shorter getaway trips. Here's a package that brings you right from the great city of Chicago out to Denver. Now, by the way, one of the nicest train stations I've ever been to anywhere in the United States, one of the most modern Amtrak train stations. It has its own hotel inside of the train station. It has a restaurant, has a coffee shop, just a beautiful area. Such an awesome city, otherwise known as the Mile High City. And you know what's near Denver? You are looking at it, folks. This is the Rocky Mountain National Park. And what's great with all of our trips is on certain days, especially in some of the national parks, you may have a half a day tour for a few hours with a local tour guide. You may even have a full day tour, depending on which national park that you're traveling to. And if any of you are looking to travel to areas where there's lots of open spaces, consider the U.S. national parks. And here's a great package that happens to be round trip from Chicago. By the way, the little black circle that you see on the right-hand side with the number two next to the city of Denver, that just tells you how many nights you're overnighting in each of these great cities. And what's so exciting, as I mentioned earlier, all rail vacations are customizable. So folks, if you want to spend three nights or four nights in Denver, we or your local travel advisor can easily add on extra nights. We can also take out nights, depending if you're trying to stay within a certain price point. Let's continue on with the National Parks theme. And the next one I want to talk about is Grand Tetons and Yellowstone Rail Journey. This package itself goes to one of my personal favorite cities, Salt Lake City. All right. Absolutely amazing. Really the gateway of some of the most iconic national parks. And you will have an opportunity to spend some time in Salt Lake City before traveling north. Now, when you travel north from Salt Lake City, folks, this, you travel in a full deluxe motor coach. Now, we also have car rentals. So if some of you want to do more of an independent style trip uh, on your own to travel and drive where you want and when you want, we also have that flexibility, as does your travel advisor. But this is such an iconic site. And let's not forget about one of the also exciting national parks, the Grand Tetons. Again, these are as you travel north from the great city of Salt Lake City before arriving in Yellowstone National Park. And by the way, a little fun trivia for all of you. If you take the states of Rhode Island and Delaware and combine them, do you know both of those states are smaller than Yellowstone National Park? All right. Absolutely amazing. Famous for its geysers. Famous being 
the first national park that ever opened up, all right, here in the United States. Lots to see and do. And what I love about this trip too, everyone, just like the first trip that I showed all of you, not all of the trips have to be round trip. Some can start in one great city and end in another. Now, one point I want to mention to all of you, you may notice some of these packages seem to either start or end in the great city of Chicago or Washington, D.C. Here's the best part, everyone. Any of our trips can start or end right from your local Amtrak train station. So you don't have to start in Chicago. You don't have to start in Washington, D.C. You could start right at your local Amtrak train station in whatever great state you are located in, all right? And again, if you don't like to fly, we or your local travel advisor can make it a round trip right from your local Amtrak station. Or if you don't mind flying, well, certainly you could fly into the great city of Chicago, as you can see on this package, and fly back home from the great city of Salt Lake City. Now, we can pretty much book most of everything for you with the exception of flights. So you can book your flights, or even better, as I keep mentioning, you can book any of these packages through your local travel advisor who also can book flights for you as well, either one way or round trip. Now, one of the last national parks I want to talk about that really gives you a great overnight rail experience is the Grand Canyon. It's certainly one of the most iconic destinations in all of the United States. But this trip's a real treat because on your way from Chicago, you actually travel through the great city of Santa Fe, all right? Definitely that Southwest type of feel, all right? Definitely that Southwest type of feel. And my advice is purchase a dream catcher, all right? Very iconic souvenir. It basically catches the good dreams and lets the bad dreams go through. It's very, very common, very popular souvenir in the area, not to mention some great cuisine, some great cowboy, cowgirl hats absolutely amazing. But the real highlight, of course, is the Grand Canyon. And what's great about all of our packages to the Grand Canyon, and this one being one of our best, our Grand Canyon discovery, is you get to travel on the train known as the Grand Canyon Railway. This is one of the Wild West style trains. Now, it's not part of the Amtrak train system, but guess what? We include this train on every single Grand Canyon package we have. Why? Because it is a must, all right? That is the train on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, that is the train station, which is located in Williams, Arizona. Now, folks, the train ride only takes about two hours. From Williams, Arizona, it brings you right into the south rim of the Grand Canyon. But what I'm going to suggest to all of you right here, right now, and certainly for some of you that have been to the Grand Canyon, I'm sure you'll agree with me, all right? Consider upgrading to first class on board the Grand Canyon Railway. You see folks, for a little bit more, you will be in the part of the train car that has the big glass dome windows. You'll have all your snacks and refreshments included. You have two extra large seats on one side, two extra large seats on the other to choose from. And there's also a form of live entertainment because once you travel through the beautiful pine forest, guess what? You arrive into the South Rim of the Grand Canyon. And this is a nice map of the Grand Canyon Historic Village. Very easy to walk around. They do have shuttles that can bring you to and from the different attractions and restaurants and different hotels and lodges, all right? And that's a big highlight. You are able to stay where we always recommend, which is really in some of these iconic sightseeing areas that has the lodges. You see a lot of these hotels and lodges, folks, many of them will book one to two years in advance. The beautiful part with Amtrak vacations, as I mentioned at the beginning of today's presentation, for any of you who may have joined us a little bit later, in the year 2019, which was just recently, Amtrak had over 33 million people travel on board the train throughout the United States. This is one of those iconic lodges, and we have many different choices of lodges and hotels. Again, that can range from three, four, up to five diamond lodges. And what's great with this package is, as you can see, it starts in one great city and ends in another. Now, again, as I mentioned, any of these trips can start or end right from your local Amtrak station. These are just some sample packages that I'm showing. And as you can see on the right-hand side, the number one, the number two in a round black circle just tells you how many nights that you're in each of these locations. And again, any of these trips can be customized. So we can add nights, 
take out nights, depending on what your price point is and your budget. Let's talk about the train, all right, before we open it up for questions for any of you. And I do see some of you have already typed in some fantastic questions. Before I talk about the seating and sleeping accommodations on the train, did you know you are allowed two free carry-on bags per person and two pieces of check luggage up to 50 pounds each per person for free? That's the best part. Last time I checked, most airlines, there is a charge even for your first piece of luggage. But with Amtrak Vacations, we allow two free carry-on bags and two free pieces of check luggage. Now, today's topic is all about overnight rail journey. So what is it like on board? Well, let's talk about it. One of the first highlights is when you upgrade to a private sleeper, you have priority separate boarding which is fantastic, okay? So that's one big highlight. Now, before I talk about more highlights and benefits of upgrading to private sleepers, any of you that are certainly traveling in the near future, just like any of us would be if we were flying on an airplane, masks and facial coverings would be required in the open areas on board the train, including coach accommodations. However, take a look at the legroom, everyone. Take a look at the seats, and I'm going to give you a big highlight right here, right now. You ready, everyone? There are no middle seats. Let me repeat that. There are no middle seats. That's a big, big highlight, so you never have to worry about getting stuck in a middle seat. There's two extra large seats on one side, two extra large seats on the other. There's also an area to charge your iPhone, your mobile device, your iPad, your laptop. There's plenty of room above the overhead, as you can see, to store any of your carry-on bags or luggage. So this is what train travel is like during the day. But lots of important things to know about private sleep and accommodation, such as you can close the door during the day. It locks from inside. Folks, if you wanna close the curtain during the day to take a little nap, or certainly in the evening for a good night's rest, you can certainly do that. Now, when you do upgrade to a private sleeper, you also have a dedicated car attendant, plus included toiletries, bottled water, and coffee. Now, I'm going to give you a big highlight right here, right now. You ready, folks? When that door is closed during the day and that curtain is closed, if you want a little privacy or you want to read a book, take a nap, maybe listen to a little music, soak up the beautiful sights along your journey, you have the option, if you choose, to take off your facial covering and mask, just like you would if you were inside the privacy of your own hotel room. You see, we can't do that, folks, as we all know, myself included, if we're on an airline, those masks need to be on at all times throughout the flights until further notice. Well, the same applies when you're in the open area for any of the trains, okay? But when that door is closed and those curtains are closed, folks, you are in your own private setting, your own private area, and you have that option if you choose, all right? Now, something I am so excited about. I feel like, I don't know if you can hear me clap at everyone. I literally, I'm clapping and I'm gonna tell you why. June 23rd, which was just recently, all right? Just about a month ago, guess what? Amtrak announced they were going back to traditional dining on some, let me repeat, some of our overnight iconic rail journeys. You see, as many of you may know, Amtrak has what's called flexible dining, which allows you to order hot, fresh items for breakfast, lunch, and dinner from the menu, and meals can be delivered right to your own private sleepers. Now, that's still being offered primarily in the trains in the eastern United States, along from Chicago east or from New York down to Florida east to Chicago. Those are still staying what we call flexible dining. Again, just giving you that flexibility to order hot, fresh items for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and have them delivered to your meals. However, all of the iconic, or the majority, let me say, of the iconic overnight trains from Chicago heading west, trains such as the California Zephyr, which I mentioned earlier, which is the train that goes through the great states of Utah and Colorado out to California, out to beautiful Glacier National Park, all right, down to the beautiful state of Arizona, Many of those trains now have what's called traditional dining. Basically, folks, what this means, you get to order hot, fresh items from the menu, but you dine inside the dining area, okay? Traditional dining service. And you have um, a Amtrak attendant, attendant, a waiter, a waitress that are serving you. 
as you can see, it's tables of four, which is nice. So you get a chance to meet some other fellow travelers, which I always say is part of the whole experience, right, folks? As we know, when we fly, many times it's just quick flights, right? But if you are traveling overnight on board the train, well, you get a chance to meet other folks from the U.S. and also from around the world. You get to hear their story. You know, why are they traveling? Are they going to see family, friends? Is it on their wish list, their bucket list, whatever it is? Definitely something we're very excited about, and I hope you are as well. Now, when we talk about sleep and accommodations, what you're looking at right here, everyone, this right here is the most popular and the most affordable sleeping category of any sleepers on board the train. This is a roomette. Now, as you can see, looking at a roomette, it fits two adults, okay, two adults on board the train. Uh, it does not have its own private toilet or shower inside the room, but it's our most popular and our most affordable sleeping category of any sleepers on board the train. What we have is what's called private yet shared toilets and showers, which is right down the hall, uh, just like you'd have at your own homes. Let me give you a, a, a closer view of what a roomette looks like. Here it is, folks, okay? As you can see, bunk bed style, but we have what we call private restroom access, private shower access. So again, it's right down the hall just like you'd have at your own homes, okay? Very popular and certainly affordable. Now, you know yourselves the best. If you want your own private toilet, shower, vanity inside of your room, then consider upgrading to a bedroom. Now, bedroom, as you'll see in just a little bit, it is a, lot, a little bit larger in size than a roomette, but it does have its own private toilet, shower, and vanity inside the room. And on some of our overnight trains, not all of them, some of our overnight trains, you can also even request to have adjoining bedrooms. So two bedrooms side by side where you can open up the door in the middle and then go back and forth between the two rooms. And this is a closer diagram of what it looks like, a, a larger diagram of what it looks like. But as you can see, it has its own in-room restroom and its own in-room shower. Now pricing, this will be more expensive than a roomette, but it is available uh, on a limited basis, but certainly a wonderful experience. My family and I, uh, my wife and I and our three children, we actually did this recently about two years ago. And we got two bedrooms side by side, folks, where we opened up the door in the middle and we were able to go back and forth between the two rooms. Now we do also have accessible bedrooms. These are a little more on a limited basis, but if you do have any requests, just let us know. Now, before I open it up to any of your great questions that you may have. I did want to mention any of you that are traveling with your children or grandchildren, if they're between the ages of two and 12, they can get up to 50% off on the rail portion of their trip. Now that's on uh, the train ticket of the actual package. It is based in coach seating. Any of you that are 65 or older, you can qualify for 10% off on the rail portion. Again, whatever the cost of the rail ticket is within a package, also based in coach seating and same as military, obviously. Any of you that are active military, thank you for your service. You, your spouses, dependents can get up to 10% off. Now, before I open it up to your questions, folks, I always love asking this fun question at the end of all of my presentations. Before I open it up to your questions, if you would be so kind, everyone, just take a couple minutes, all right, and just type in for me on the right-hand side of your screen in the question box, what destinations are you considering for your next vacation. What is on your wish list, everyone? What is on your bucket list, all right? If everyone would be so kind, just take a minute or two and just type in what great destinations. I see Los Angeles, Alaska, all of them, uh, Grand Canyon, Reno, Denver, DC, California, New England, keep them coming, everyone. Montana, Oregon, trying to decide, of course, lots of great options, Yosemite, uh, Alaska again, Santa Fe, Glacier, uh, Grand Canyon, Denver, New York, keep them coming, everyone. I can't even keep up as fast as they're coming in, but I really appreciate all your feedback, everyone. So keep these answers coming. And, and what I will say before I open it up to any questions you may have, as I mentioned, folks, we are open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, as well as on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That phone number is listed on the left-hand side of your screen. You can also visit our website, AmtrakVacations.com, or even better, you can contact your local travel advisor who not only can book all these trips, but can also book flights for you as well. So if anybody wants to fly one way or a round trip, you get to decide. All right, so with that in mind, I see we have lots of great questions, which is fantastic. And folks, I'm gonna do my very best to get to as many questions as I can. So I wanna thank you all so much. All right, so 
with that in mind, okay, let's see. Um, so Sally, hi Sally, what would be the best entry point to get on Amtrak traveling to Boston from Stevens Point, Wisconsin? I could tell you exactly, Sally, that would be Boston South Station, Boston South Station, because if you hear a little bit of an accent, Sally, and for the rest of you joining us, um, the accent is from New England, actually from the Boston area. So Boston South Station, which is really in the heart of the city. That's where you'd want to get off. And any of our vacation consultants uh, can do that as well. So just wanted to mention that. All right. Uh, let's see. Hi, John. How are you? Uh, yeah, Amtrak phone number, best number to reach. Or John, as I mentioned, if you have a local travel advisor in the area that you have worked with on any of your vacations, travel advisors are fantastic folks. Um, they're basically your real estate agent. If you know, you look at it as a similar analogy, if you're selling your home, many times you'd feel comfortable to use a real estate agent. Well, the same applies for travel agents and travel advisors. Uh, so if you have one, fantastic. And if you don't, there's some fantastic ones all over the United States. And sure enough, I'm sure right in your own backyard. All right, let's see. Hi, Marvin. Yes. So any of the trips you can book to travel anytime this year in 2021, anytime in 2022, or even into 2023. So depending on when you're looking to travel, Marvin, you'll have lots of great options. Okay. Um, oh, thank you, Melissa. Thank you so much. Let's see. Yes. Uh, Marvin, yes. Have you provided travel for landscape photographers and landscape uh, photographer groups? Lots of great options, Marvin, for a lot of folks looking to take, um, you know, photographers and landscape photographers. So I would ask um, either your local travel advisor or one of our vacation consultants to tell you more. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, hi, Richard. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate your kind words. Um, Peggy, uh, how much was the coast to coast package? A great question, Peggy. So all the packages obviously range in price. It's all live pricing on any of our packages. Just like if any of you were booking a flight, any of you booking a flight, the flights could change from the morning until later in the day. That's the same with us. It's all live pricing. So um, depending on which package you're interested in, just pick up that phone, give us a call, or even better, contact your local travel agent. All right. Thanks, Peggy. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, and yes, the way the way really any of our travel advisors book with us, is, as well as any folks out there, best way is always picking up the phone, giving us a call. Website can be a little bit tricky. Um, so we always recommend always calling us or your local travel advisor because many folks, as I'm sure many of you, even on today's presentation, typically like to customize, like to add an extra day or two or take out a day or make additional stops, maybe visiting family or friends. So that's what's nice. There's nothing better than speaking to a person live on the phone. All right. So just wanted to mention that. Let's see. Okay. Uh, yep. That phone number, the bottom left-hand corner is the main phone number to call. And folks, as I mentioned, lots of demand right here in the U.S. Now more than ever, certainly as the rest of the world is tricky to travel to at the moment, right? Um, certainly not as, not really as many restrictions other than of course, fa uh, facial coverings and masks would be required on board the trains, just like they would be on airlines, just like they would be in um, any city transportation as well, until further notice. All right. So just wanted to mention that. Uh, hello, Paula. Uh, is there an Amtrak train station in Santa Fe and can luggage be checked in? Yes. Many of the train stations, Paula, the large train stations, you all have that ability to check in luggage right from the train station. Um, to your final destination. You also have the ability, everyone, to bring on your luggage if you choose, and you can store it on the first level of the train. That's what I personally like doing. I like having my luggage with me, and what I do is I bring a small carry-on bag for the night, for one or two nights when I'm on board the train that has, you know, obviously change of clothes, uh, pajamas, toiletry items, snacks, maybe a good book, some music, all right. But I have access to my luggage on the first level if I need it. We always recommend just to have your luggage locked with uh, either a key or a code so you can get in it if if or when you need it. But you do have that flexibility at certain train stations to check it in until your final destination. It's whatever is best for you. All right. Hope that helps, Paula. Thank you. Uh, let's see. OK. Hi, Martha. How are you? Um, we have booked a trip from Chicago. Uh, which includes a round trip to explore Bryce Canyon, Zion, um, uh, the, many of the uh, parks on our own. Do we need to pre-purchase or arrange uh, entrance to those parks or is that included? 
That is a great question, Martha. Um, many of them should be included, but what I would say is some national parks, there might be an entry fee of $5, $10, up to $20. It's very minimal. I would almost suggest, Martha, to either give us a call or contact your local travel advisor, however you book that, just to ask, because every national park, everyone is different. Some include the entrance fee, some may not. But if they don't, as I mentioned, it's only five, 10, up to $20 a person, very minimal um, that you would pay right there and then, okay? So anyway, just wanted to mention that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Peggy, you can give us a call uh, regarding any booking options, uh, and uh, certainly they'll put you in touch with one of our uh, business development managers, uh, right? Uh, let's see, okay. Uh, Marvin, is it possible to stay longer in a location and continue on after? Absolutely, Marvin. Again, any of our trips can be customized. What we always ask everyone is just to let us or let your local travel advisor know in advance where and when you wanna stay longer so we can prearrange it for you because it's very hard to do it right there and then uh, spur of the moment because we can't guarantee you can get back on the train when you want to get back on because it's all based in availability. So as long as you know where and when, then we can help you with that. Uh, yes, today's presentation is being recorded, Bill. So everyone will receive a copy of this after. Sure. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, Kathy, uh, with yes. So some of the shuttle buses. So what they've done is there's other forms of transportation, whether it's shuttles, whether it's private um, whether it's private, the transportation, car rentals. So obviously with the demand in the USA, obviously a lot of folks have um, certainly been using more uh, and more different forms of transportation within some of these different national parks. So any of our vacation consultants can certainly help all of you or your travel advisor with some good options for, for everyone. Uh, let's see, okay. Uh, do, do, do. Oh, okay, Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Um, very good question. Lynn, uh, Lynn mentioned, I'm a little concerned about being claustrophobic in some of the sleeper cars. Can you please talk about that? Absolutely, Lynn. So first off, you know, obviously the doors, you can leave the doors open, giving you that fresh air. All of you that upgrade to private sleepers, you also have access to the observation car. You have access to the, um, the, the dining cars in between meals that you can sit at at the tables if you want. You also have access to any available coach seating, and that's free of charge. All those items are free of charge when you upgrade to private sleepers. So if any of you might be concerned, um, you have lots of flexibility to be out and about amongst different areas of the train, where obviously, as an example, in the observation area, that's the part of the train with the big glass dome windows, um, certainly uh, giving you more of that fresh air and space. All right. So anyway, hope that helps, Lynn. Uh, let's see. Peggy, do people sleep in coach? Uh, it is available. People certainly can sleep in coach, obviously, but it's just in your seat. Uh, but there are folks that certainly have that option if they're trying to stay within a certain price point. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, Anne-Marie, where is the nearest Amtrak train station in the San Francisco Bay Area? I could tell you exactly, Anne-Marie. It is uh, Emeryville. Emeryville is the main train station, folks, that uh, is really the um, the uh, the gateway to the San Francisco Bay Area, and that's the train station that the California Zephyr travels on. That's one of the that's one of the top most iconic trains in the fleet of Amtrak. Uh, and then what you do is you take a shuttle bus from Emeryville into the San Francisco Bay Area. It's about a 30 minute uh, drive, and that's also included for any of you that are going to San Francisco or Yosemite uh, as well. So anyway, hope that helps. Oh, thank you, Marvin. Thank you. Yes, please. Our pleasure. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, so again, Renee, you have the ability. Renee's asking about what happens to your luggage on the vacation trips. Do you take luggage with you? It's up to you, Renee. Uh, again, you can check it in. Not all train stations offer the option to check in until the final destinations. Typically, it's the larger train stations that offer that. Um, or you have the option, like I do many times, I bring my luggage with me, I store it on the first level, and I have a little carry-on bag just with the important items that, um, that I want to uh, return back. All right. So just wanted to mention that. Let's see. Okay. Um, da -da -da -da. Okay, just mirror. It. Oh, oh, sure, Sherry. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for your kind words. You know, this is why I love what I do, everyone. Uh, seriously, one of the best presenters ever. Can't wait to make our reservations. Your enthusiasm is contagious. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, thank you, John. Yes, and, and obviously, 
always try to make it fun any way I can for everyone. And thank you for being here. Uh, how would you dine with mass requirements? Great question, Sherry. I can tell you exactly. So you have you have your masks on in any of the open areas until further notice, right? Once you sit down at your table, you can take your mask off. Once you're in the privacy of the table, eating and drinking, you're actually able to take your mask off. And I will say, I flew recently because I had to get back from uh, I had to get back to work. And when I flew, I remember, and I don't know if this was just particular on one airline or not, but I remember when I asked the flight attendant if I was able to take off my masks as they were serving coffee and tea and snacks. Again, this was on an airline. She said, "Please leave your mask on and just lower it when you want to take a drink, or lower it when you want to take a bite to eat." That's different on board the train, folks. When you go to the dining area, once you're once you're in your seat in your booth and you're eating and drinking, that mask can be off completely at all times until you're ready to get up and go back to your sleeper or your coach seat, wherever you are at. All right. So just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Oh, thank you, Laura. Yes, absolutely. And by the way, folks, we have a lot of single solo travelers. So if any of you are single solo travelers, definitely keep that in mind. We'll help you any way we can. Um, let's see. Uh, Rich, are the bedroom sleepers on the top or the bottom of the train? Uh, great question, Rich. They're actually on both. So we have a lower bunk bed and a, and a and an upper bunk bed. So depending on you know which one you prefer, there's a little ladder that you can step on. They do have a, a, a gate and a net for any folks that are staying in the upper bunk bed. Very, uh, very spacious, very comfortable as well. Uh, sleepers, great question, Janet. Sleepers can be for a single or solo traveler. Uh, obviously, being a single or solo traveler, there will be a little difference in price because it's one person in the room that could fit up to two people. So it's always going to be a little more for a single or solo travelers. And that's pretty much any type of travel, whether it's being on a cruise ship, in a cabin as a single or solo traveler, but it is available. Absolutely. Uh, there are power outlets. Yes, John, for CPAP machines, if any of you may need uh, that as well. So we do have that available. By the way, everyone, thank you so much for all your fantastic uh, answers of where you're looking at, what you're already booked on, where you're planning to go. Lots of great options all over the U.S., uh, which is great. Uh, Connie, how many chairs in a bedroom? Great question, Connie. One chair in the bedroom and the shower is where the toilet is at, okay? So it's a toilet that also turns into a shower. So it's in the same room area, which is kind of nice and convenient because it's right there. Uh, let's see, okay, just move it along. Hello, um, Alan, yes. So I would suggest, you know, it, it, Alan's mentioning if, you know, on board the trains, is it smooth? I always suggest um, to speak to your local physician uh, just so you can have any, if there's any 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 dizziness or air problems, just to make sure, you know, you, you, you and your family is comfortable. Um, but we do have folks that will do that before they leave and whatever your um, doctor, he or she may prescribe, certainly that will help, okay? But it, I can tell you firsthand, overall very smooth throughout all the journeys in general, um, which is good. Uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, thank you, Victoria. Thank you so much for your kind words. Uh, let's see. Okay. Hi, Tony. When you book a room, is the price for the uh, of the room for two people or is it the price per person in the same room? Great question. So whenever you book a room, it's it, pricing is always per person. So two to a room. All right. So it's per person. So as an example, it'd be, you know, $800 for one person, $800 for the second, okay? Obviously, if it's a single, it's it's one price for the one person paying uh, basically the cost of two people because it's one person in a room. So it's always uh, per person, all right? Hope that helps. Uh, thank you. Uh, let's see. Hello, Laurie. Any trips to Great Lakes, the Dakotas? Yes, of course. Yes, we got some great ones out there. Um, and yes, if any of you, Stefano, are looking to travel with family or friends in a group, just let us know. It's again, it's all live pricing. Uh, I'll, let, I'll let your local travel advisor know uh, and they'll help you any way they can. Uh, Deborah, is it possible to take a round trip from Chicago to Seattle with overnight stops? Absolutely, yes. Yes, there are, absolutely. Let's see. Um, and Sherry's asking, any local travel advisor or some more Amtrak savvy than others? You know, I will say, Sherry, travel advisors in general, they're all, they, you, you really, you can't go wrong. They're all great. What I, what I would suggest is, you know, I'm a big believer, 
asking family friends, right? Um, if you're involved in social media, that's also a nice tool to ask any of your own family friends or folks in your area, in your neighborhood, hey, any, any local travel advisor that you would suggest, that's probably gonna give you the best recommendations, best suggestions. I know my wife and I, we often do that if we need a plumber, if we need an electrician, right? Because you're getting people in the neighborhood, in the area, um, uh, if, if again, some of your own family and friends may not have someone off the top of their mind that they would recommend, that that, that would be my suggestion. So hope that helps, Sherry, thank you. Uh, let's see, can you have any meal in your bedroom from Chicago West? Yes, so Robert, you do have that flexibility. They have gone to traditional dining, but if you prefer to dine in your room, you do have that flexibility, yes. Uh, let's see, okay, uh, where could I get on an Amtrak from Phoenix, uh, Arizona? Great question, Alice. So they do have one, uh, the Amtrak train stations in Tucson, but they do have what's called bus throughway service. So basically areas such as Las Vegas, uh, Phoenix, uh, Yellowstone National Parks, where the train does not physically go to, they have what they call bus throughway service, which is basically motor coaches that are part of the Amtrak fleet that basically connect you. They basically connect the dots, connect you from one train station to another. Um, so that's that's what I would suggest, Alice. Hope that helps. Um, any trips to the state of Maine? Yes, Lori, there is. And as many of you may have saw recently, the Canadian border is now open to Americans as of uh, in August. So I'm, I don't have the date off the top of my head when it is available, but any of you could travel on an Amtrak vacation train and also connect in to uh, Canada as well sometime in August after, once the borders are officially open. They're not as of today, um, but they will be soon. Uh, let's see, okay. Uh, yeah, Bruce, absolutely. We can offer, uh, let's see, tips from Chicago to Seattle, San Francisco to Chicago journey. My advice, Bruce, for that one is that's you're better off speaking to one of our vacation consultants uh, or your local travel advisor, because they're gonna give you all the different places that are to see the times, suggestions, they're the best ones to talk to because they can tell you live right here and then what they would suggest. Uh, let's see, okay, hi Dennis, um, are the two suitcases stored in a baggage car or can they be brought into the bedroom suite? Great question, Dennis. So, uh, you know, the, I personally would not suggest to bring uh, any of your larger luggage inside of a roomette or a bedroom. They can be stored in the first level. That's what I do, Dennis. I bring my large luggage, right? I start on the first level, I have a lock on it, but then I have a carry-on bag with me with the important items that I need for the night. But if I forget something or maybe want an additional sweater or blanket or something, I always have access to the luggage. So that's what I would suggest. I uh, hope that helps, all right. Uh, let's see, yes, Alan, you absolutely can. You can connect from Princeton, Illinois into Chicago and then back. That's the beauty, folks. Any trips can start and end right from your local Amtrak station, all right. Uh, John, great question. So yes, you can lock the rooms from the inside. Now, when you do leave, I will say there's an Amtrak attendant folks that are in each of the sleeping cars and he or she is always going up and down the aisles, just making sure, you know, they're there to help, help to answer any questions with turn down service, obviously, to keep an eye out for any of the rooms uh, while you're away. I always suggest any valuable material, John, if it's, you know, any, any, any type of jewelry or certainly any, any cash, like I brought my, my wallet, of course, with me. I also had my jewelry on, um, anything important, you just bring it with you. If you're going to the observation car or the dining car, if you're concerned, uh, with any type of security, but they are, um, dedicated to keeping an eye out for all the rooms as well as to be there to help answer any questions and, and whatnot. So you could feel, you definitely feel comfortable. It's, uh, it's really, uh, a safe safe environment which is great uh let's see okay madeline uh does paying for the maximum flexibility lock in the price of the trip so yes folks once you deposit on any trip wherever you would be interested in whenever you're looking to travel once you deposit the prices are locked in which is great so if if or when the prices go up which i will tell you they're gonna go up more and more again as i mentioned and i'll mention again as the rest of the world is very tricky to travel to currently at the moment so many folks are traveling internally. They're staying right here in our own backyard in the U.S. Um, so best way is letting us or you're letting lo your local travel advisor know um, sooner than later. So at least you can lock in those prices. So when, not even if, but most likely when they do go up, you will have saved at a better rate. 
All right. So I just wanted to mention that. Uh, let's see. OK, uh, Kathleen, how many restrooms uh, per roomette? There's typically, Kathleen, two to three toilets on each floor and two to three showers. OK, and uh, and that's on every in every sleeping car. Every sleeping car, folks, consists of multiple roomettes, multiple bedrooms, as well as accessible bedrooms. Uh, and again, it's only the people that are in sleepers have access to those toilets and showers um, as well. Uh, the dining cars are open. Yes, Anne-Marie, uh, absolutely. Great questions, everyone. And I'm going longer because you all have some fantastic questions. So just wanted to to mention that. Uh, let's see. Um, Carol, are there options available for a person with limited uh, ambulation? Uh, yes, yeah, so lots of great options, folks. Any accessible uh, needs, any folks that need any um, any special dietary requests, uh, Amtrak's absolutely fantastic with a lot of those great options that are available. All right, I uh, just wanted to mention that. Uh, Kathy, you have to climb into the upper uh, bunk in the bedroom. It's just it literally is one to two steps and you are in the top bunk. And as I mentioned, folks, the top bunk, you do have a gate and a net that can keep you nice and uh, nice and comfortable and, and certainly uh, give you that comfort in the evening as you're sleeping. OK, uh, let's see. OK, uh, great question. Madeline's asking, um, obviously, with COVID precautions, uh, you, you, you do not need to have a negative test in order to travel. Again, masks would be required, but Amtrak has um, pretty much gone to uh, sanitizing the handles, the doorknobs, the inside, the outsides, the toilets, the showers, every hour upon the hour. Uh, they also are circulating air every four to five minutes. It's one of the most state-of-the-art air filtration systems just to give all of you that fresh air uh, as you travel on your journey. I mean, really, it's, uh, you know, I always say, even with everything that certainly has happened in the last year and a half in the world, right? Um, there's some silver lining moments, you know, uh, such as, you know, priority boarding, right? Uh, you, you you certainly have um, everything that much more sanitized maybe than what it used to be in the past. So it's, it's certainly for the better, uh, which is great. Let's see, okay. Uh, Joyce, uh, is there a premium for solo travelers? There is, again, solo, single travelers. We have a ton of single solo travelers. It's always going to be a little bit more because, again, it's one person um, taking the space of a room that would fit two people, and that's on any any type of trans any type of travel. Even if you were traveling on a cruise, it's always going to be a little more uh, as well. So, uh, anyway, just wanted to mention that. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, how do I find a local travel advisor? Again, Nadine, my advice is ask family or friends, or if you're involved in social media, uh, certainly you can put it on. Uh, put a comment on social media and I guarantee you'll get lots of references. That's what my wife and I do whenever we need a plumber, an electrician, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, it is not hard whatsoever, Lena, to get into the top bunk. Uh, very easy, as I mentioned, uh, one to two uh, steps and you're there. Uh, let's see. Uh, here's a good one. Carol. Hello, Carol. Are there adjoining rooms uh, on the California Zephyr? There are many of the trains, not all of them, but many of the trains offer adjoining bedrooms. Roomettes do not adjoin. Let me repeat, roomettes do not adjoin, but you can get roomettes across the hall from each other. And roomettes have, uh, they could fit two people in one room, two people in another. But there are some overnight trains that have adjoining bedrooms. So um, you can open up the door in the middle and go back and forth between the two rooms. That's what my, my wife and I and our three children did. Uh, which was nice. So, oh, Geraldine, thank you. My pleasure. Uh, and yes, we can help you with rental cars, folks. Okay, Robert. So um, Robert's asking if we can help with rental cars. Certainly this year, the demand is very, very high. So obviously there are some, fo there are some destinations that's a little harder or tighter on space, but certainly for 2022, 2023, we can help you with that uh, as well. Let's see. Okay. Um, doo -doo -doo. Oh, thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you for your kind words. Um, can you close the door on a roomette and take off the mask? Madeline, yes, you can. Once you're inside your own private sleeper, whether it's a roomette, a bedroom, an accessible room, as long as that door is closed, folks, and those curtains are closed, you can take off your facial covering or mask if you choose. It's totally optional, okay? Um, just want to mention that. Oh, Bruce, thank you for your kind words. Thank you. Uh, let's see, okay? Um, let's see. Oh, I, Bill, great, great question. Great point. Bill's mentioned you might want to remind uh, the folks that they can get an inexpensive national park pass. That's right. There are 
it is available where you can get a national park pass uh, separately that can get you entrance into a lot of the parks. Absolutely, Bill. Uh, so again, if you already have a trip book and you're going to the national parks, entrance may already be included to many of them, but some of them they may not, which is where the national park pass uh, can come in handy. Or again, you have the option uh, to pay that right there at the park, which again, many times it's only five, 10, up to $20. So very, very inexpensive. Uh, Connie, do all the train stations have parking uh, for cars? Great question, Connie. It all depends on the train stations. Many of them, the larger ones, have long-term parking, overnight parking. Some of them do not. It all depends on where the train stations are located. So um, certainly if you have family, friends, uh, or you want to take a taxi or Uber, to drop you off if there's a train station that does not have parking, you you, you certainly have that option, uh, or you can be able to park long term, depending on uh, where you are starting and ending. Okay, uh, Lori, uh, do all trains have an observation dome? All the overnight long distance trains do. So that would be many of the uh, trains from Chicago heading west, um, as well as some of the overnight journeys along the eastern United States. But basically any of the longer overnight journeys do have an observation dome, and that is free of charge as well, everyone. Uh, that is free of charge. Uh, do seats recline? They do. Yes, they do recline, which is great. Uh, let's see. Okay, can I catch a train from Wilmington, Delaware to connect uh, onto some of these packages? Lynn, yes, absolutely. And I've traveled into Wilmington, Delaware. So you absolutely have that option. Oh, thank you, Lynn. Uh, can you bring your car? Tanya is asking. Tanya, guess what? You can only on one train, one train uh, in the United States. And it's called the auto train. Some of you may be familiar or have traveled on the auto train. It is an overnight train from Lorton, Virginia out to Sanford, Florida, and then Sanford, Florida back to Lorton, Virginia. Uh, Lorton is right outside of DC and Sanford, Florida is right outside of Orlando. Um, Renee is asking, how far in advance should you make your reservations? You know, folks, as I mentioned, and, and I'll mention it one last time, there is so much demand here, especially for this year more than ever, domestically in the United States, as so many folks are not able to cruise just yet, or so many folks are not able to travel internationally just yet, or if they are, it's very tricky with certain guidelines and restrictions. So it's created a huge um, uh, demand right here in the US. So our suggestion is, you can plan now and you can travel this year, next year, or even into 2023. And the earlier you do, uh, the better it is. So, oh, thank you, Carol. Thank you, Heather. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, Deborah's asking, is there a bar on all trains? Uh, there there are on most. And, and pretty much the snack cars always will have some type of uh, alcoholic beverage available as well. All right. So, folks, there are so, so, so many questions. So, I just want to say, first and foremost, I want to apologize if I did not get to your question or I do not get to your question. I promise you, please, please know I tried. Um, we have a huge audience joining us here today. And I hope I hope you have found today's uh, presentation enjoyable as much as I enjoyed uh, presenting to all of you. So folks, with that in mind, um, thank you all so, so much um, for your kind words. Uh, again, you don't need to be vaccinated in order to travel on board the train as long as you have a facial covering or masks out in the open areas. And when you're in your sleeper, if you choose to take off your facial covering or mask, once that door is closed and those curtains are closed, you absolutely have that flexibility if you choose, all right? So anyway, folks, I just wanted to say thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for all your kind words for all of you that have um, sent me messages. And again, if I did not get to your question, don't even think twice. Pick up that phone, give us a call, or even better, contact your local travel advisor. With that in mind, everyone, on behalf of Amtrak Vacations, thank you so much for being here. And we look forward to having you, your friends and family on board soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.